There we go. Well, we're here with uh, Steve Bennett, the uh, some might say the godfather of of Brownsburg soccer. You know, just talk about this being kind of y your baby as you started it and kind of nurtured it, and it's turned into such a, a grand program here. And just take me through that a little bit. Well, again, like you said, when we started it um, 30 years ago. Uh, a lot of players obviously hadn't really played it very often and uh, we had limited facilities and I guess that's the thing that is really neat to watch is as you watch the players play on a facility like we have here today and you just look at the the overall quality of play that they have, uh, you know their technical abilities, that's really what is fun to watch, how far the game has come in terms of the, uh, the caliber of the players that we put out there now. And that's that's what I've enjoyed the most in terms of watching how things have developed over the last 30 years. Well, you talked about it there, or touched upon it there for just a second. You know, had no funds, no facilities. You know, what was it like in those early days trying to, to, to gather funds and facilities? And, you know, like it was, you were the second local soccer program to be to be approved as a sport. I mean, what was that like to, to overcome those obstacles? Well, the people who really need to take the credit for that, um, we had some parents who were really, really supportive and um, I think I mentioned in the little write-up I provided that when we went to the school board to ask for permission to become a varsity sport, it was really that core group of parents that were putting together that program and, and basically putting together a, uh, a proposal that they couldn't really say no to. And um, you know, we did fundraisers and things of that nature which again, those parents were very instrumental in uh, putting together. So in terms of <clears throat> actually getting everything approved by the school board and uh, by the athletic department, it's that core group of parents who really put it all together. And that's why it would have been neat if uh, we could have got some of them, because I know some of them are still around town. Sure. And uh, it would have been neat to have gotten them some recognition too. Well, talk to me about that first season a little bit where you guys were the club team and you ended up with a 13-2 and record. Did that leave you obviously a little bit satisfied with what that was, but maybe wanting a little bit more? Well, again, that, the, the first the season when we were 13-2, and that was our first varsity season. Um, that was a, a neat team because uh, it was our very first year officially as a, a, a varsity sport. But it was also... Um, really our third season and so we had had some players that had played when we played in the springtime the two spring seasons that we played well I guess maybe the three spring season that we played and those kids had started off as freshmen and uh, by 83 they were seniors and they really were a core group of what turned out to be a really good team the 13 2 team and uh, we lost to North Central in like the uh, final 16 I think it was and uh, North Central went on to become state champions and I always remember that particular match um, I think in the first 20 minutes we uh, hit the post and we had one cleared off the line and you always wonder if those would have gone in what would have happened it could have been a different story but <laughs> it's, it was a neat a neat season and again it was a lot of those kids had started when we were doing club in the springtime right and they were freshmen sophomores and by the time we got to that 13-2 season they were um, you know seniors and they were kind of the core of the team obviously you've been around the program so very long and uh you started out, you know, bringing soccer to Brownsburg. Talk about your passion for the sport, and obviously, it's I think it's what might keep you around. I mean, I was born in England, and I, I, I moved to this country when I was 12. And if, if you are a normal 12-year-old in England, then you know you're football mad. I mean, that's that's it. And uh, and coming over here was a bit of an adjustment because there wasn't really any soccer to speak of. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, if you're a young English boy, you just, it's in your blood. And, uh, and, and what's neat now is that with uh, cable TV and satellite TV and the internet, I mean, I can follow it now as closely, even more so, than when I was, you know, over there. So, um, um, I, again, I think if you're just, uh, if you're English, my age, born in England, you grew up as a kid, I mean, it was what you did, basically. Right. And I guess I kind of kept with it. And um, and, and and what's what's neat now is that 30 years ago, you could have taught the kids about, yeah. about the sport. I guess we just scored. <laughs> um, 
you couldn't talk to the kids about the sport as fans because they, even though they played, they didn't know who the big players were, the big teams around the, the world were. But now, the kids are fans of the game and, you know, they know the top teams in England and, you know, they talk about the match, they watch the match on satellite TV. And, uh, I enjoy that at school, talking to kids about the sport and, you know, that Manchester United beat Arsenal 8-2 to two and, you know, talking about that in class. I mean, I find that fun. And so, uh, and that's that's been a huge change in the last 30 years. Is right. not just how the players have gotten better, but how there's a real fan base now, which there was not 30 years ago. So. You also got to coming to this country. You got to see the growth of this sport here, of which you had a definite impact and in, in a part of. Has that ever settled in and set in on you that that you know you might have had a part of that? Oh, I I don't think so because I mean you know the, the sport was such that it was going to come into Brownsburg anyway. I mean, again, I talk about those parents that were instrumental in putting together the program and, and how much credit they should take. But I also remember, I mean, when I first came to Brownsburg, and my first year of teaching here was in the fall of 80, and I believe in the spring of 80, I think that was the very first year the Junior League had their soccer program. And you know that that's a big deal. That sure. they had their very first um, junior league program. So with that starting in the spring of '80, I mean, eventually, whether it was, whether it was me or whether it was somebody else, eventually, soccer would have uh, you know moved into the high school when those six, seven, eight, nine year olds are playing when they get to high school, they'd want a place to play. So somebody eventually would have uh, would have gotten together a program. So. Okay.